Family Theater presents Grandpa's Marvelous X-Ray with Alexis Smith as hostess. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Grandpa's Marvelous X-Ray. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Alexis Smith. Thank you, Tony Lafano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives. If we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. Tonight, Family Theater takes great pleasure in presenting Grandpa's Marvelous X-Ray, featuring Ralph Moody as Grandpa. It seems to me that the very young and the very old have one big thing in common. All those folks in between don't seem to understand them. Maybe that's why us oldsters get along pretty well with the youngsters. Now, <laughs> take me, for instance. I've got a fine great-grandson, Jojo. Well, Jojo and me are pals. You see, I live with my grandson, Big Joe, we call him, and his wife, Florence. That's Jojo's mother. Well, right now, Jojo has a new baby sister, so he's kind of on the outside. Jojo, please don't slam the door. The baby's asleep. Gosh, Mom, I'm sorry. I forgot. Uh, play outside for a while, dear, until after the baby's nap. Go find Grandpa. I just wanted to get a drink of water. Well, go ahead and get it, but quietly. <laughs> Yep, that's Jojo's burden at the moment. And me? Well, I have my pension from the railroad, and it helped me to run the household. So I feel I'm paying my way. And we get along pretty good most of the time. Except sometimes me and Jojo just sort of have to break away and go over to the park. <laughs> that's where Jojo had himself a big time on the slides and swings. And I talked to some of the other old boys who make the park their afternoon headquarters. You ever notice that about parks? For the very young and the very old. When Jojo gets tired of scooping around, he comes over and just sits while me and the boys play cribbage or chew the rag. Fifteen two, fifteen four, fifteen six, and two pairs ten. <laughs> that skunks you, Mr. Gresham? Oh, luck, that's all it was, just plain fool's luck. Well, now, I don't know about that, Gresham. Let's look at the record. Oh, you and your darned old records, Fred Miller. Can't you ever forget you was a bookkeeper? For good business, you gotta keep good books. Now, uh, let's see. As I recall it, Gresham owes me for 123 games, counting two today. Well, now, let's check. I haven't made my entry for the days yet, but the total does appear to be 123 in your favor, Tom. Huh? <laughs> and every one of them was lucky. Of course, you're doing much better with me. <laughs> Only 115 games behind. Just a little losing streak, that's all. Well, we'd better pull out of the station right now for home, Jojo. About time for that bus to come by. Ain't getting too old to walk, are you, Grisham? No, I ain't getting too old to walk. Jojo and me just happen to like to take the buses, you concerned old deadhead. No, ain't he touchy today? <laughs> Better go home and practice, Gresham. Oh, come on, Jojo. <laughs> don't get lost now, Gresham. <laughs> the concerned old deadheads! Hey, Jojo, now don't you talk like that. <laughs> that was pretty good, though. <laughs> Those old ginks are always riding me about those cribbage games. But I figure I'll be back even about 1960. That is, if those old fellas live that long. It's not so far to home from the park that we couldn't walk, but Jojo gets a big thrill out of riding the bus, so we always wait for it. How much longer, Grandpa? Well, Jojo, we'll just see about that. Now, let me get out my watch. Now, uh, let me see. Yeah, must be about four more minutes. 
Of course, these buses don't run nowhere on time like the railroads. Gee, that's a keen watch. Yeah, pure gold. Ever tell you about the time J.D. gave me that watch at a special dinner in my honor? Yes, you did. Well, I just finished my 20th... Well, in appreciation, therefore, J.D. Williams, the president of the line, said to me that he could... What's the matter with that fool dog? I don't know. He's just sitting there in the alley looking at that brick wall. Yeah, likely there's a bug or something on the wall. Well, as I was saying... He... Look, Grandpa, he's walking out to the street. Yeah, appears to be somebody coming out the door. What is that, a butcher shop? The sign says, Fancy Meat at Plain Prices. I guess that's what it is, Grandpa. Yeah, look at that dog beg for something. <laughs> but the woman says scat, and scat he does. I thought only cats scat. Look, Grandpa, he's going right back to the wall. Sure enough. And look at that critter cock his head and wag his tail. What kind of a dog is it, I wonder? Jojo, I'd say that was a dog dog. From a distinguished and varied line. Here he comes again. Well, so he does, and I'll be jiggered. Someone coming out of the store again. But that man didn't pay any attention to him at all. Why, nope, sure didn't. And there he goes back in the alley again to sit in front of that blank wall. He's a nice-looking dog. Hey, Jojo, what do you make of that? Gosh, Grandpa, I don't know. I guess he can just see the people come out. Jojo, I wouldn't say this to another soul alive, but that's just what I was thinking. Come on, Jojo, let's try something. But our bus! Oh, hang the bus, boy. We got to find something out. <laughs> Now, I ain't one to jump at conclusions because I've been wrong a few times in 84 years. And even though JoJo's idea seemed to be the evident answer, I didn't feel like saying right off that the dog could see through a brick wall. So JoJo and me go into the store. There aren't uh, any more customers, just the butchers there, so we order a little hamburger and wait. There you are, sir, and that'll be 74 cents. 74 cents? Hmm. This here is a pretty expensive experiment. <laughs> well, there you are. Thank you, sir. Say, mister, is that your dog out there? No, sir, he is not. Just a stray I've been trying to get rid of all day. I think I'll call the dog catcher if he's here tomorrow. I see. Well, thank you. Come on, Jojo. Come again, sir. Now, look, Jojo, you take this package and hide it in your shirt. Inside my shirt? That's right. Now, let's go out on the sidewalk. Oh, this package is cold. Yep, there he is. Now both of us will stand right still and see which one he comes to. Grandpa, look. He's coming right to me. Hello, doggy. Well, what do you know about that? Come here, Poochie. Can I give him some meat, Grandpa? Can I? Well, it seems like he's earned it. Boy, is he hungry. Look at him eating. <laughs> yes, sir. That's one hungry dog. Grandpa, can't we take him home? Uh, don't think your mother would take to the idea, Jojo. Gee, I'd sure like to have him. He could stay out in the backyard in the uh, shed, couldn't he? Now, now, Jojo. Uh, but Grandpa, he could, couldn't he? Well, he is a remarkable little dog. Be good company for us. But I don't think we should just out and out take him home. He probably doesn't have any place to go. Uh, Jojo, do you think we could skip the bus ride this afternoon? I don't care, Grandpa. Uh, thought maybe it'd be nice to walk home tonight. You know, kind of stroll along like we was uh, airing the dog. Gee, Grandpa, you mean he might follow us? I didn't mean nothing, Jojo. But we sure couldn't help it if that dog just uh, took to us. Now, could we, Jojo? And I bet we wouldn't even have to call him. <laughs> well, let's go uh, whistling on our way. <laughs> Well, now, <coughs> maybe that uh, wasn't exactly the thing to do, but it hit me all of a sudden that Jojo needed that dog. Well, I've always liked to have a good dog around myself, so we walked home, the three of us. <laughs> My, what a sight. <laughs> You'd have thought that dog belonged to us all his life. <laughs> we went to the house the back way and got the dog all settled in the shed with some water and a place to sleep. He seemed to like it, so we went into supper. How did things go today at the office, Joe? Oh, not bad. You and the baby have a good day? Oh, she fed it a little bit. But on the whole, it was a pretty good day. 
Grandpa and Jojo went to the park this afternoon. Well, how are the cribbage games, Grandpa? Uh, can't win for losing. Those <laughs> fellas just lucky. They're a couple of consigned old deadheads. <laughs> Jojo! <laughs> Joe, you mustn't laugh at him. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, Jojo, if I were you, I wouldn't take up all of Grandpa's railroad talk. Uh, uh, could I have some more meat, please? Hmm? Oh, I uh, sure. Me too. Oh, well, you two certainly worked up an appetite today. Well, oh, yeah. fresh air, you know, fresh air. Reminds me of the time when I went back to being on the road after a desk job. I swear, I never had such a change of appetite in my life. Jojo, Why, I, what have you got in your lap? Uh, Why, well, Grandma couldn't cook enough Grandpa, food to begin... just a minute. Jojo, I asked you what you had in your lap. A napkin. Yes, but what's in your napkin? <coughs> oh, nothing. Let's see your napkin, Jojo. What? Food? Meat, potatoes, bread? Jojo, what on earth? Oh, I just thought I'd eat it later. Eat it later? What were you planning to do? Put it under your pillow? Uh, now, uh, just a minute, folks. Uh, I think I'd better tell him, Jojo. <clears throat> uh, we, uh, Jojo and me, uh, uh, have us a dog. A dog? A dog? Yep, a dog. You like him, Mom. He's so pretty. And gee, Daddy's real smart. Well, where did you get a dog? Uh, well, uh, he, uh, he followed us home from the park. Followed? Yep, followed. Where is he now? Out in the back, in the shed. He uh, followed you there, too? Come to think of it, he did. <laughs> I will not have a dirty old dog around here with a new baby. Oh, but Mom, you should see him. Oh, mighty fine company for the boy. But this is not the time for us to have a dog. But Mom, he doesn't have any place to go. Well, we'll call the city pound, and they'll find a home for him. But he likes us. Please, Dad? Florence, uh, why not just give it a try? One day, that's all. And if it doesn't work out, we'll call the city day after tomorrow. But I have enough to worry about. Please, Mom. Um, all right. For one day. And then we'll see. Gee, Mom, thanks. I know you won't be sorry. So, Jojo and I got to keep the dog for one day. I'm a little tired of calling it the dog, so I might as well let you know that Jojo and I decided the next morning to name him X-Ray because of his special talents. And we soon found out that X-Ray could do his share of tricks. <laughs> Gee, that was a good one, Grant. Yeah. Now, now, you try, Jojo. Hold out your hand and snap your fingers. Oh, sure. <laughs> hey, I can't seem to get much snap on it. <laughs> that don't seem to make much difference to X-Ray. Hey, looky, looky there, sitting up as pretty as can be. <laughs> oh, yes, isn't he? <laughs> now, 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 hold your hand out and make it go in a big circle. You mean like this? Uh-huh. <laughs> Look, now you see there, he rolled over like magic. He sure did. Yeah. He sure did. Hey, now, now, Jojo, let, let's try something. Now, now, you go in the house and stand right about here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that, that ought to be just about in front of the bookcase. And, and then uh, first you snap your fingers for X-ray to sit up. And then you wave your hand for him to roll over. Now, now go ahead and let's see what happens. You watch him now. I'll be right back. Well, Jojo disappears around the corner, and sure enough, just when it would about be the time that he'd be in the living room by the bookcase, X-Ray starts staring into the wall of the house like he was a seeing something. He cocks his head to one side, and by jingo, he suddenly sits bolt upright. Then he lets out a bark and rolls over just like he did before. <laughs> well, you can be sure that's the clincher as far as I'm concerned. That fool dog can see through brick walls. I'm feeling real happy about the whole thing when X-Ray, who is still looking at, or uh, uh, through the wall, suddenly puts his tail behind his hind legs and comes sneaking over behind me. <laughs> Can't figure what's got into the critter. Oh, but then Jojo comes out, closely followed by his ball. Grandpa Gresham, what kind of nonsense are you teaching this boy now? Why, we were just conducting an experiment. Well, when I find Jojo waving at the bookcase, I want to know what's going on. Did it work, Grandpa? Oh, slick as a whistle, Jojo. Gee! What works slick as a whistle? Hey, Mom, he can do it. X-ray can see through walls. And just who is X-ray? The dog, the dog. Mom, the dog. Now, maybe your mother wouldn't understand. You mean to say you're trying to tell this youngster that that... That that beast can see through walls? But he can, Mom. We just proved it. Oh, this is the last straw, Grandpa. 
You should know better than to fill Jojo's head with such crazy ideas. Well, believe me, tonight, when your father gets home, young man, we're going to see about that dog. Ah, oh, Ma. And no more nonsense about him seeing through brick walls. Yeah, I didn't think she'd understand. But what are we going to do, Grandpa? Well, I don't know about tomorrow, Jojo, but right now I've got me a scheme. We've got a special trick to teach X-Ray, and then we head for those two old card sharks in the park. <laughs> Yes, sir, I had a little scheme. And Jojo and I worked the rest of the morning teaching Ekray a special trick. And believe me, that dog is as smart as a whip. Well, that afternoon, we head for the park. Jojo and Ekray do some racing about, and I play some cribbage. And as usual, Tom and Fred gets lucky. The time comes for our accountant to read the books. And now, Gresham, you owe Tom for 125 games and me 117. Oh, luck. That's all it is, luck. Come on, admit it, Gresham. We just play better cribbage. Why, 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 you two old coots aren't smart enough to beat that old dog sitting there. We're too good for him, Tom, so now he wants us to play his dog. <laughs> <laughs> dog probably could play a better game. I bet he could uh, beat you both. Now, 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 Jojo, you keep out of this. I'll tell you what I'll do, gents. I'll bet you my gold watch against 25 games on the records that this here dog can beat both of you at your own game. Gosh, Grandpa, your watch. Yes, sir, my solid gold watch. Well, now, this sounds kind of interesting. He's going plumb loco. What kind of a game? A game you fellas should be real good at. The old shell game. Now, here are the shells. One, two, three. Now... One of you can hide this penny under any one of the shells. We'll keep the dog's head under the table, and I'll bet you he can find it every time. How's he going to do that? He'll nuzzle the right one. Every time? Every single time. My gold watch against 25 games off the book every time. Well, now, Gresham, I, I hate to take your pretty gold watch, but I'll take you and your dog on. Hey, good. Put him under the table, Jojo. Come on, boy. Under here, boy. All right, Tom. Make your choice. <laughs> oh my. Yes, sir. Old Tom made his choice, all right. And X-Ray spotted it right off. And then Fred tried it, and then Tom, and then Fred, and so on. And every single time, that X-Ray vision picked it right out. I was kind of worried once, though, when Fred held the penny in his hand and didn't put it under any of the shells. But X-Ray notices Fred's hand, and after he licked it once or twice, old Fred has to give in, and both of them called it quits. <laughs> after that, after that was over, they both owed me over a hundred games each. Yes, sir. That was quite a day of triumph for Jojo and me, and we went home pretty happy. Why, I even stopped at the butcher shop and bought X-Ray the biggest bone I could find. Yes, sir, we all was really living. But the next morning at the breakfast table, we were in for quite a shock. Are we going to the park again today, Grandpa? X-Ray likes it. Yeah, we might, Jojo, we might. I sure hope so. Joe, remember what you were going to tell them. Oh, uh, yes. Jojo, uh, Grandpa... We had a talk last night, and we both feel that maybe we shouldn't keep the dog. Shouldn't keep it? Oh, now, hold on. Now, wait. Uh, now, wait. Jojo, your mother and I want you to have a dog sometime. The right kind of dog. When you're older, you can take care of it better. But X-Ray's doing all right. Jojo, your mother and I feel that right now is not the time. We have a new baby. Your mother has too much to do as it is. Besides, you're getting a little too excited about the so-called uh, amazing talents of this dog, which might be your fault, Grandpa. Yeah, I was afraid of this. I will not have that dog barking all over the place. Now, you'll have a dog someday, Jojo, but I'm going to call the City Pound when I get to the office. They'll find a nice home for, for X-Ray. But I want him to stay here. I'm afraid it's settled, Jojo. You don't know what a wonderful dog X-Ray is. If they take him away, I'm going to. Sit down, Jojo. No! I'm going to hide him from you. Then they can't find him. Jojo. Oh, dear. You shouldn't have let him keep him in the first place. Grandpa, this is all your fault. Yes, I, I guess it is. 
Well, I'll go find the boy and see what I can do. I'll try to tell him. But we're going to miss old X-Ray. He could kind of see right into your heart. <laughs> Uh, that was a hard day for Jojo and me. Why, we had almost packed up and run away three or four times. We was thinking of one plan or another, you know, like putting X-Ray in the circus and being his trainers. But finally, we just kind of gave up. Jojo, X-Ray, and me were sitting out in the yard early in the afternoon, waiting for them to come and get him. <coughs> now, hush up, X-Ray. Baby's starting her nap. I guess he wants to play. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, X-ray old boy. We, we just don't feel like a frolic right now. Grandpa, isn't there something we can do? Yeah, looks like not, Jojo. Looks like not. Here comes Mom. Yep. Oh, now isn't this a happy little group? Baby finally went to sleep, so I thought I'd get a little fresh air. You don't mind if I join you? No. It's your house. Jojo, Grandpa, listen, I don't want to be mean about the dog, but really, we just can't have one. Now, now you see, he's going to wake up the baby. X-ray, now you be quiet. He's looking in the house again, Grandpa. Yeah, he's really studying something well, in there. Make him be quiet. X-ray, X-ray, what in the world got into you? I want you to go in the house, Grandpa. Look at him trying to play. Well, whatever he wants, make him stop barking. I wheel the baby into the living room so it will be more quiet, and he's sure to wake her. The baby's in there, Florence? Oh, yes, why? What's the matter? I don't know. I'm going to find out for sure. No, what in the world's gotten into Grandpa? Gee, I don't know. I guess he thinks X-ray has seen something in the house. Oh, how silly. But look at him, Ma. Huh? See how see how he's watching Grandpa in the house? And go across the living room. Look at X-ray's tail wag. Jojo, I don't want to hear any more of that kind of talk. Florence, huh? get in here quick. The baby's smothering. <laughs> Well, Florence came running in, closely followed by Jojo and X-Ray. First time the dog had ever been in the house. The baby was getting all kind of flushed and a mite blue, but Florence pounded some air into her and she started to breathe again. Jojo, X-Ray, and me waited in the living room while Florence got the baby back to sleep. I sure hope the baby's going to be all right, Grandpa. Yeah, I, I think so, Jojo. Thanks to old X-Ray here. I wonder if Mom will believe it now. What we said about X-ray. Yeah, it's hard to say, son. It's hard to say. Did she go to sleep, Mom? Uh, yes, Jojo, finally. Oh, what a scare. She was all wedged up in the corner of the crib. Oh, I can't understand how she did it. I, I, I just put her down. Oh, I'll get it. Are you sure you feel all right, Florence? Uh, yes, Grandpa. I'm all right now. How do you do? Is this the question, residence? Yes. I'm from the city pound. You called, I believe. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, we did, uh, we uh, wanted to find out about getting a license for a dog. Well, well ma'am, all you do is take the dog down to the pound for the necessary shots and fill out the forms. Oh. oh, well, thank you so much for your trouble. You see, we thought at first we might be getting rid of him, but we've changed our minds. Small boy involved, no doubt. All right, ma'am. Well, just don't sit there looking at me, you two. You heard what I said. Oh, Mom! You mean we can keep X-ray? <laughs> yes, we can keep X-ray. Did you hear that, Grandpa? Yep, I heard it, Jojo. Good news for sure. <laughs> I kind of think X-ray heard it, too. <laughs> well, sir, from that day on, X-ray had the run of the house. <laughs> Got better treatment than I did. And that dog was a comfort to all. Things was better from then on. The very young and the very old had something in common with the in-between. A very common old dog. Of course, Big Joe had a heck of a time hiding Jojo's Christmas presents where he and X-Ray couldn't find them. <laughs> but things worked out real nice. We don't talk about X-Ray's peculiar talents much anymore, me and Jojo, uh, just now and then. Like the other day when Jojo said to me, Grandpa, do you think we could train X-Ray to help us find buried treasure? We could tell him it was a bone. No, nope. I don't know about that, Jojo. I kind of think old X-Ray could see right through that. This is a 
Alexis Smith again. Our story tonight was a fantasy, or we might call it a fairy tale. I think it was a very charming fairy tale. Of course, we, we know that dogs can't really see through walls and that apart from fantasy and, and science fiction, perhaps, things like that don't happen. And yet there are wonders, events, and the solutions of problems that can't be accounted for by any natural explanation. I'm, I'm not referring to superstition either, stars and black cats and walking under ladders. There's something else that is neither superstition nor fairy tale. The great poet Lord Tennyson said, more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. And it's, it's almost a matter of experience that heartfelt and faithful prayer is heard and in some fashion always answered. But if the prayer of an individual is so powerful, how much more the united prayer of a whole family. For hasn't he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of them. It is to remind us of this, this great wonder and this great truth, that Family Theater brings us this program every week. For it is true today as it was a thousand years ago, that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Grandpa's Marvelous X-Ray. Alexis Smith was your hostess. In our cast were Ralph Moody as Grandpa, Gene Bates, Howard Culver, Stuffy Singer, Earl Keane, Jim Nusser, and Dal McKinnon. The script was written by Roderick Peterson, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which responds to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present Charles Ruggles, Marjorie Hartford, and Rod O'Connor in God and a Red Scooter. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Thank you.